So let's talk about batteries in carts. Um, with the exception of like three titles, all Game Boy and Game Boy Color games that hold a save use battery backed uh, SRAM to do it. Now there are mods you can do that replace the SRAM with FRAM. Uh, there are also custom PCBs that you can build that do that mod for you and include a battery socket instead of a tabbed battery. Um, I appreciate the simplicity of the battery socket. It's, I, I mean, that that's never been lost on me. I understand it's so much easier to get batteries locally when you can just pop on down to the battery store and, you know, grab something that fits. Um, rather than having to order tabbed batteries from like DigiKey or something. Um, but I've also been of the opinion that tabbed batteries really aren't that expensive and you're only replacing these every 10 to 20, in some cases even 30 years. Uh, so it's really not that big of a deal to just get tab batteries and solder those in. Um, I, it, especially because even if you're doing a mod, it requires soldering anyway. So it, it's more effort to make it so you don't have to solder on something that you, you might only ever actually replace once. But that being said, for those of us, for those of you, for, for anyone out there who really wants to add a socket to a stock cart, which even though this is a flash cart, it is still a stock Nintendo cart. There are these things now. So what these are, uh, these are custom circuit boards designed by uh, my buddy HDR here. Um, you get them made out of flex PCB material because you need it to be as absolutely thin as possible. But how this works is this will solder on to the battery tab to solder points and then it has two more solder spots for a um, battery retainer. And uh, well, we're going to try it out. So just to see where we're starting off. I have no idea what game is even on this cart. Pokemon Gold. Oh, this looks like the same save I have on like every cart, yeah. Alright, I know exactly where we are. I have, I, I played through Pokemon Silver, not Gold. I played through Pokemon Silver relatively recently. Um, and then I took the same save and flashed it to, like, six carts because of who I am as a person. So, I'm not too concerned about losing the save, and in fact, if I do lose the save, I could just restore it from one of my other carts. Anyway, so the first step is going to be taking the cart out of the casing. We do not want to do any soldering in the casing, especially since I made this custom and I can't replace that. The uh, only pink aftermarket is a completely different color. Anyway, unrelated. Let me get soldering iron warmed up. And just to humor myself, this battery isn't, it's not low, but it's not high either. It's right about middle of the road. And unfortunately, that's what you get when you buy um, cheap no-name batteries. I recently picked up a, um, a very large pack of batteries for cheap on eBay, I believe it was. And yeah, you can do that, but those really don't last as long as the name brand ones. So it's not recommended. Also, if you're doing this and your battery is still good, you are going to want to back up your save because there is now no save on this cart. 
this is also not strictly necessary, but you can wick the excess solder off there. I'm just going to add a little bit more solder because the flux in the solder will make that nice and fresh. All right. So how this goes on, we need to make sure it's oriented properly. Well, yeah, yeah, we need to make sure it's oriented properly, otherwise the battery will be backwards because of how the retainer attaches. Um, so on these flex boards, you can see there's a little itty bitty plus in that corner and a little itty bitty minus in this corner. The minus, unsurprisingly, goes on to the minus and the plus, well, that's going to go on the plus. Uh, so we should just have to line it up, press down, and that should be it. I'm going to fix these, though. I'm not liking how this is coming out. this one too. I'm just flicking off the uh, extra solder. Okay. Now we need the retainer. So unfortunately, um, these retainers, they do come in sizes up to uh, 2032, but with the retainer, you can't fit a 2032 in here. Uh, in fact, I'm not 100% sure if we can fit a 2025, but it should be fine. I think this was tested. I don't remember. Anyway, um, make sure the opening goes towards the top because if you put it towards the bottom, you won't be able to slide the battery in with the mask ROM chip there. And actually, I am going to tin this first. It is not a great solder joint, but we'll come back and fix it. Same thing there. As long as it gets tacked down, I can deal with the rest later. And unsurprisingly, it does get hot. So, I can't tell from the fact that my spudger just melted by touching it. I'm just trying to get rid of some of that excess solder I put way too much on. over here. Alright. And for those that want to verify I'm not cheating, you can look up the part number on this chip. This is SRAM, not FRAM. This cart will not hold a save without a battery. And unfortunately, we cannot use this unbranded one 
any longer. But we can use this other cheap one that I have here. Because I have it. So the uh, the orientation is slightly misleading because with these batteries, generally the negative side goes up and the positive side goes down. But with these holders, the positive side goes up and the negative side goes down. But that will just slide right in there. Just like that. And it does flex a little bit, but I guess that's why they call it a flex PCB. Drop that in there. Oh, you know what? I have had this an absurdly long time and never used it, so let me double check the voltage. <laughs> okay. I was afraid of something like that. <laughs> All right, so this is why you don't buy cheap batteries. Uh, where is my other batteries? All right, I also have these uh, actually decent Maxell batteries that are falling out of their packaging. And same deal, negative down, positive up. Oh, and this one is showing zero volts as well. Ooh, very interesting. I think this is the same problem I have with my flash carts. And it is kind of difficult to deal with once the retainer is on there. My solution was always to take a little bit of copper tape which is surprisingly useful stuff for that. So the idea is that the adhesive is holding it on there, but the folded part is what's making contact. You can jam that back in there. And now the multimeter is showing the full voltage. That's better. I think the solution to that problem is to just make the uh, circle area a little bit bigger because unfortunately the solder resist 
the solder mask here does have a little bit of a thickness and depending on the batteries you use which I tried both this cheapo generic one and the name brand Maxell and neither of those were recognized but that does slide in nicely uh, but just to verify because this is technically an aftermarket shell well there's nothing technically about it it's, it's an aftermarket shell here's an OEM shell that fits in and that slides on no bulge nothing fits perfectly we'll throw it back in here New game? Yeah, it's kind of what I expected. I mean, we did remove the save battery after all. It is definitely not the day. It is 9 o'clock and 18 whole minutes. Well, that clearly needs cleaning. That's a problem. That is also a problem. I suspect we will have another crash shortly. May have been a bad game to test this with. Mm -hmm. Or maybe not. World of Dreams and Adventure. I think I would like to save the game. Alright. No shenanigans. It's running off its own power. This isn't a really good demo, is it? With my glitchy flash cart. But there it is. Yeah, flash cart froze again. So, that is unfortunately a problem with the flash cart itself, not with the mod. Um, there's really not a whole lot I can do about that. This is the one that I built with eFlex PCB a long time ago, and I have always had problems with the solder on this. Um, so, just to verify though, we can pop this out and stick it in another cart. So, how about the original? one that the save actually came from. And this one has a 2032 instead of a 2025. Oh, but that one's actually kind of low. 
So, getting time to replace it anyway. Again, back up your save. take a second and clean this because there's an unusual amount of gunk on it. Pretty sure that one wasn't solder flux. This one, the gunk is solder flux, but I don't know what the heck was on this one. Might have been solder flux too, but it's all clean now. And I'm going to transfer this over because I just don't have any more battery retainers, so. Comes off the same way the batteries do. so it goes in straight the first time. Got some solder on the uh, letters there. Shoot. Well, once it's on there, it doesn't come off, unfortunately. But at least we can remove most of it with some wick. Never be gold again. Okay. Pop the max cell in there. New game. Such is life. That's awkward. Now this one's freezing too. It is occurring to me that it could be this Game Boy. I've never actually tested this Game Boy. I just kind of built it and um, posted it to Instagram and that was pretty much it. <laughs>
Now, I'm not worried about losing my save because I know that my save already exists on my EverDrive and my Easy Flash, so I can just restore it from those. Also, I have another Pokemon Gold cart somewhere with my save on it, and probably another Pokemon Silver cart somewhere with my save on it. So, between all four of those options, I think I'm good to go. There we go. So yeah, I'm going to uh, rule that freezing. I'm going to assume that's a console thing, and I probably just have to clean the card slot or something on this. This thing was really gross before I put it in the new shell. But there you go. If you don't want to deal with tabbed batteries ever again, then uh, you'll still have to deal with tabbed batteries as you replace these. But... Um, the very least going forward your carts will uh, have easy to replace batteries um, now of course if you're not playing Pokemon games that have real-time clock function functionality then you can just get a flash cart like this one that uses FRAM and then because there's no real-time clock, there's just no battery. Um, or like this one, this one uses FRAM, but it still needs the battery for the real-time clock. So, I don't know. Choices, choices, trade-offs. Uh, every decision you make, there's going to be one trade-off at the very least. But, um, yeah, I will throw a link in the description to these things, they are relatively cheap, all things considered. Um, I don't know what HDR plans on doing with them. I will, I will mention to them that I did have some problems with the uh, battery making contact properly, but I think that's easy enough to work out. And uh, well, until next time, guys. Thanks for watching. Have an excellent day. Or night. Or not. I don't know. I don't see any cops around.